everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Robert Moss, um, a New York Times bestselling author, and we are talking about his book, Growing Big Dreams, Manifesting Your Heart's Desire Through 12 Secrets of the Imagination. He will be coming to Seattle online, actually, at the eastwestbookshop.com on February 26th between 6 and 7.30. So make sure to sign up for his class. And we're talking about his book. And in your book, and actually in the last segment, our first segment, we were talking about how we can be way more intentional and conscious so that we actually have active dreaming. And in your book, you talk about things that you can do before the dream, like set up an intention, like I wanna be healed, or I wanna meet my soulmate, or you know, give me a sense of what we can do. I was, I would love to like, what should we do before? Um, and then there was in your book, what happens in the middle of the night as I get older, I almost wake up inevitably in the middle of the night. Um, and that seems in some ways to be this wonderful liminal state that I can actually do a little bit of my own magic in there. Um, so with dream reentry, but then you talk about like which side of the bed you're sleeping, all this like wonderful stuff. And then what would you do after you dream? Like, I just, just jump out of bed. I tell my husband and then the, the dream kind of like flows into nothingness by the end of the day. So um, let's start with before the dream. How can we be more an active dreamer and consciously shape, shape our dreams? Well, let's talk about intention and about scheduling as we discuss how you approach the dream experience. You, know, you can set an intention of any kind for the night if you hadn't been remembering dreams at all, which is the case for a lot of people in our society. Your intention might be as simple as, as, simple as I'd like to have some fun in my dreams and remember. Notice I inserted have fun. I think just saying I'd like to remember a dream is a bit boring. I'd like to make it a bit juicier than that. So if you have not been remembering dreams, your fundamental intention might be to start remembering we'll talk about scheduling in relation to that. If you are a dreamer who remembers dreams and maybe has a practice of recording them, and by the way, until you start keeping a journal of your dreams, you'll never be very successful as a dreamer. It is your most essential tool, your own oh. book, your own dreams, your own diary, writing something down. Uh, if you are in the habit of remembering dreams, well, then you can start playing around with some really interesting intentions. You know, you can, you can be very brave and say, show me what I need to see. I mean, that takes courage. Oh. You might be showing something you'd really rather not see. You could make it a very gen general, generous, life-affirming intention, like I ask to be healed, or like I open myself to my creative source. Or if you're a writer or a storyteller, you could say, I'd like a new story that, uh, that I can mm. bring. I often ask for that because I'm a storyteller, essentially, yeah. one mode or another. So I often say, I'd like a new story. Or I might say, I'd like to go on an adventure and bring back some souvenirs. I mean, because <laughs> I recognize that dreamy might be traveling. And by the way, in the shutdown period of the pandemic, this is one of the great things about dreaming. We can mm. travel without leaving home and we can be as social as we like and we can do it any night. So when I said intentions, they're often travel intentions. I'd like to go somewhere new. I'd like to meet a friend in Paris in that great restaurant tonight. And mm. get memories. So setting a juicy intention is part of it. You can do that. You've also got to think about scheduling. Okay, maybe you haven't been very successful at remembering dreams. Well, relax. Don't be hard on yourself. When you wake up, and it might be the middle of the night, most people wake up sometime during the night. They might think it's just about going to the bathroom, and they might find they're awake for a while. First of all, try not to jump out of bed straight away. If you have to run to the bathroom straight away, well, try and multitask or <laughs> do two things at once and see. Your how bed. You yeah, that's the easiest you thing. Bring back the dream while other things are going right. on because you want to stay close to the dream place for a while if you can. And don't say you've got nothing. Sometimes we wake up and we think I've got nothing. Okay, fine. Well, it's not fine. Just think about it. You might have a little something. It, may, it might just be very wisp-like. It might be just oh. Breadcrumb, just a little fragment. Be kind to your fragments, whether you're a prolific dreamer or not. I get a great deal out of tiny little snippets from dreams. It might not seem like much to begin with, but you write them down, you think about them, you walk about, walk around them, things start coming back. And if you've not been remembering dreams at all or not much, this is precious advice. Be kind to your fragments. Say to yourself, I might have something. It might look like nothing compared to someone else's tremendous social adventure or their epic drama or whatever, but you got something, you probably do. And now if it's the middle of the night, which is the stage when you're finding yourself awake more and more, 
Don't kick yourself saying I'm awake. Don't think you just have to go to watch TV or get back to work. Uh, make part of your middle of the night activity the effort to just lie in bed in a relaxed position practicing horizontal meditation. You're just lying in bed. You can augment this or, or, or deepen it as a practice in various ways. Sometimes I just lie there and I just count. I don't count myself down. I count myself up like one, two, three, four. And I notice how long it takes or how little time it takes before a strong image begins to emerge. Mm. Now, if I'm a certain kind of meditator. I might say, get out of here, images. I want to go somewhere beyond the imagery. But I like the play of images. I'll notice if I'm available to images that come in that spontaneous way, whether I'm counting or just lying there and becoming available, I might have the doorway to a fabulous lucid dream adventure. I might find myself in contact with an inner or transpersonal guide because this is prime time. The contact with intelligence is beyond the ordinary mind, and that's been recognized in many traditions. I might find that I'm seeing the contents of my mind that I wasn't aware of, whether it's the shadow side or aspects of myself and my personal symbolism that haven't been in full consciousness. All sorts of other things happen. It is an effortless introduction to a, a yoga of consciousness on a very practical, universal level. You don't need any particular mantras or funny words or disciplines to do it. All you need to do is to practice being available on the cusp between sleep and awake. Practice relaxed attention, attentive relaxation in that state. So the sleep researcher's name for this state is hypnagogia. Hypnagogia. This is a state between sleep and awake. Not nearly enough has been written about it. My new book has a very important chapter about it called Treasures of the Twilight Zone, because I think of this as a twilight zone of experience. So in terms of enhancing your dream record and your dream experience overall, I think one of the most important things you can possibly do is be available and attuned to what can come to you and what you can work with and play with in this liminal state of consciousness. And then we come to the question of, you know, you're going to get out of bed right away. I mean, CJ, you're a very activist person. You have a lot to do. People need you. They love you. They want you on call. You jump out of bed and you get into the business of the day. I know lots of people who operate the same way. Sometimes I have to. In the days when I was traveling 60% of the time, I had to jump out of bed and get to the airport, you know, two or three times a week. These days, I'm able to revert to what is probably my default mode, which is I don't want to get out of the bed, out of the bed in a hurry at all. I want to linger in bed. I want to see if the last dream stays with me or comes back to me. Mm. I want to see what rises and fall again. This is now technically the hypnopompic state. That's when you're coming out of sleep back into the waking world. And it's another phase of this liminal zone. Of, 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 of becoming available to images and imagination. And if you want to be a lucid dreamer, by the way, the easiest way I would suggest is to become lucid in these states and stay lucid. That's easier than remembering to look at your hands in the sleep state or something like that, to start out lucid and stay lucid. And this liminal state of consciousness is beckoning you to try that out. Mm. You talk about it in your book as dream re-entry. So when you go back into the dreams, what is your intention? So you talk about like maybe having fun, maybe doing some healing. Are those the possible things that you can do during or problem solving? Like, what is it that you're trying to do when you re-enter? And how do you, and I'm sorry, this is just like really a tactical question. So I'm, I now have a dream notebook where I'm jotting down when I wake up what the little fragments were. I now need to use the restroom. I then come back or the loo, I don't know what you call it. Um, so you go back and then, and then I'm trying to get myself back. You know, I'm counting up and getting into this state. Then I'm having these new images and like, how am I gonna remember to write these down? Am I like having these images? Am I writing down my new images? How, how does that whole tactical sequence work? Well, you've asked six excellent questions. Let's. <laughs> Tempted to go with the last one. First. Waking nightmare for you. <laughs> okay. We need to come back to the first one big time. Okay. But let's take, let's take the last the last one first. It is a, it is about.